Good morning, dolls and gents. How y'all doing? It is Sunday. <clears throat> I hope you all are up and getting ready for church this morning, getting ready to go out and worship the Lord. Now, me personally, I love Sabbath I love Sabbath service on Saturday, but if you worship the Lord on Sunday, worship him on Sunday. Just get up and give reverence. Give reverence to the Lord because he is the one that woke you up this morning. He is the one that continues to allow provision. He continues to give you another day. Even if you're doing the wrong thing, he gave you another day to get it right. Not another day to get it wrong. Not another day to continue to go against the word of God. Because you are truly a creation of the Lord. So you are a child of God. And it's just up to you if you decide to walk in the light. My heart is so heavy this morning for just the just in general people that are not living according to the word of god but they go to church every sunday and they still home and they still practice the same sins and they've not changed one bit matter of fact they are learning how to do worse things from the people of god that is so not right y'all on purpose to be a christian is to follow christ to follow his examples we are to mirror his life we are to look like him we are to respond like him we are not to be caught up in this foolishness on facebook it is not of god all this ignorance that has nothing to do with god your conversations should give glory to god your facebook posts should give glory to god your wardrobe should give glory to god you have to be set apart be in the world but not of the world that is the thing that somewhere we have lost and I know because I was taught in churches that where nobody was teaching they were speaking holiness but not living it and we get confused because we see the people of God and they doing the same thing we doing they doing the same thing they cutting up they cussing when they not in church they sleeping around that is not of God he has called us to be set apart on purpose. People should be able to see your lifestyle without you saying a word and be able to know that you are a Christian. The way you respond in conflict, the way you respond when somebody is, when you're tired. We all are a work in progress daily, but you should be able to look back at your Facebook post whenever it comes back from last year and you should be in a different place. If you're still in that same place, you are not growing in your Christianity. You are not growing in relationship with Jesus Christ. You are not growing closer mm -hmm. into him. We should be growing closer to him on purpose. We should be dying to self daily. If you are not suffering in any area of your life, you might want to be mindful because dying to self, it causes some suffering. But God is a comforter. So dying to self means cutting out ungodly friendships. That person that calls you, they don't talk about nothing but nothing bad. They always have something negative to say. They always critique and something. They go to church and critique everybody at the church and everybody's past and what they said. But they not living a life of godliness. They ain't opened up their word in forever. If you have not opened up your Bible and your friends can't sit down, y'all can't talk about the word of God. That friendship is not giving glory to God. If you like alcohol and you like drinking, but you don't want to put that bottle down, you are not dying to flesh. Mm -hmm. If you still like fornicating and you still busy laying around and sleeping around and knowing you're not married. Or if you're married and you too busy sleeping around with other people and you know that you're married, you are not dying to flesh. You are, have not allowed the Holy Spirit to really come inside of you and live inside of you because the Holy Spirit will make you do right. It convicts you. It taps on your shoulder. It reminds you. The word of God circumcises the flesh. That is why you have to get in your word. That is why you have to open your word daily and hide it in your heart so that you don't sin against the Lord. If you truly love the Lord, I'm convinced. I'm convinced that we don't believe like we say we believe. Well, let me speak not for myself because I'm not going to put myself in that category. I'm convinced that people do not believe in God for who he is because if you truly believe in God and Jesus Christ if you truly believe that he died on the cross for your sins if you truly believe that he's coming back again for a church without spot nor wrinkle if you truly believe in heaven if you truly believe that's the place you want to go then you have to truly believe that hell is real and you have to truly believe that there are steps to get to hell and there are steps to get to heaven. Is your lifestyle taking you up the steps or down the steps? 
if you don't know, you need to open up the word of God and see what thus says the Lord about your life because judgment day is real. And when judgment day comes, everybody has to stand for themselves. And Matthew has a scripture that it just, when I read it, it just made me feel some type of way. Many will stand before the Lord on judgment day and say, I prophesied in your name. I cast out demons in your name. I did miracles in your name. And he said, I will turn to them and say, turn away from me. You worker of iniquity, you breaker of God's laws. I never knew you. Lord have mercy, oh God. I do not want to stand before the Lord and have him say that to me. But he knows our heart. Man judges on the outside. But the Lord knows our heart and he knows if your heart is truly given to him. He'll know it if you put your sin on pause. If you put your sin on pause to get up and go to church on Sunday, but then you pick back up, you are not wholeheartedly believing in Jesus Christ. You have not submitted your will unto his will. You have not fully been filled with the, with the Holy Spirit. On purpose, y'all, we have to turn from our wicked ways. It's too many people in these pulpits playing and not telling the truth. I can't worry. I was a teaching, a, um, I substitute teach, and I was teaching a class the other day, and I was telling the children, I said, listen, when y'all in this classroom acting up, this is a Christian school, and when y'all in this classroom acting up, you are not giving glory to God. Your mother does not want you in this classroom acting like you don't have no sense. It is a privilege to get up and come to school. Your mama works all day. Your daddy works all day to provide for you to have clothes and books and to pay for your education to come here. And you are not giving glory to God. When you are talking while I'm talking, when you are cutting up in that seat, when you're not sitting still, when you're not focused, you are giving glory to the devil. They got quiet. Now, the funny part is, the Bible says you have to be like a child to enter the kingdom of heaven. When I tell y'all, honey, we had circle time, and those kids, they was asking me questions, and we were sharing, and they said, one of the little kids said, Miss, Miss Smith, do you think our teachers filled with the devil? I said, I will not pay. Wait, we are worrying about ourselves right now. I'm substitute teaching. But kids will tell the truth because your lifestyle shows it. You can say, stand up on Sunday morning, honey. You can preach and pray. Yes, God. You can sing to the heavens. But if your lifestyle does not reflect it, if you do not move out of the spirit of love, if nobody can tell that you have the spirit of God inside of you because of the way you live and love, you might want to check yourself. If you are known for being nasty, that is not of God. You are not moving in the Holy Spirit. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's just truth. And we have to tell the truth because so many people are sugarcoating it. I feel like I could have gotten further along, but it, it, all things still work together for the good. But I wish somebody would have loved me enough to pull me to the side. Pull me to the side and not use me for my talents and my gifts and say, oh, she's so gifted. She just can organize the children and she just dresses so nice and she just looks so nice and she dances so well. But nobody pulled me to the side and said, listen, baby girl, you can do all those things great, but you are not giving glory to the Lord in your lifestyle choices. Being gay is not of the Lord. You better read in Galatians and Corinthians because it says you will not inherit the kingdom of God. That is what the word says. I didn't say it. That's what the word of God says. Take somebody, whoever it is that's struggling, if you're struggling, if you're struggling with sin, just start reading that Bible. And let me tell you another scripture that really convicted me when I really read this one, it blew my mind. John 8, when it says, you don't hear me, you can't understand what I'm saying. You don't hear me because you are not my child. It said, you are the children of the devil and you love to do the evil things that he does. That hurt my heart so bad. I said, wait a minute. For 10 years I was gay and I was following the devil? I was being a child of the devil. When you are not being a child of God, it's only one other child to be. When you are not moving in the Holy Spirit, it's only one other spirit. And that's the spirit of darkness. 
So whenever you cussing and drinking and partying, all of those are listed in Galatians. These are not my opinions. You can read the word of God for yourself. Open up that Bible, knock the dust off of it, and read what thus says the Lord about your life. If you are truly a child of God, you want to hear the word of God. When you don't want to hear the word of God, you might want to also still check your spirit. For me, I don't even watch, I can't even watch TV no more. I can't even hardly watch the news because it ain't nothing but a whole lot of sadness and craziness. I surely can't watch VH1. My favorite channel used to be. I can't watch it no more because they're not giving glory to God. They're giving glory to the devil. They're talking about drinking, partying, sleeping around. Nobody's married. Nobody's faithful. Why would you want to entertain that? I'm confused. Is why we have more people watching that than I, I'm driving to the church for the second time. I had to be there at seven this morning because my daughter's in the choir, but I'm driving back to church and I'm confused as why the highway is not packed bumper to bumper like it is when it's time to go to work. And the Lord is the one that allowed you to get that job. He's the one that gave you, allowed you to have gas and allowed you to have strength and allowed you to have the wisdom to be able to do your job. But this highway, y'all, is so clear. Glory to God. Thank you for that with me. But I would have rather it be packed with people trying to press their way to get a word from the Lord, to give reverence to God, to say, I'm going to get up out of my bed on Sunday morning and I'm going to go and I'm going to give reverence to the Lord because he is good to me. Even in my trials he is good to me even in my pain he is good to me this is what i've had to learn as you continue to grow your faith and grow in your faith trials will come and they will come greater and they come heavier but the heavier the trial the greater the god come on in the room that's the real thing that i've learned i try my best to lean when i tell you lean 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 on them scriptures my son and I had a conversation yesterday and he told me he was afraid about something. I said, let me tell you something, son. I know you haven't been reading your word. Because if you had been reading your word, you would have read in your word that the Bible says that God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. You would have read in your word that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every single tongue that rises up shall be condemned. That is your birthright as a child of God. That's why we have to read our word. It strengthens us in our moments that come for us. In our tests and our trials, we have to lean on that word. You can't turn to your mama because your mama can't stand for you. Now, it's all right to call her after you already touched in and tapped in and said, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. You are my redeemer and my savior. When I tell you I continue to offer Christ everywhere I go, I don't even know how to not do it. I was, I was um, on Facebook the other day and somebody sent me a message and it was my first time receiving this and I heard people talking about it, but it was my first time receiving a message like this. Some man sent me a picture of his genitals and at first I got angry because I was like, what in the world? Why would he think that he should send this to me? But then I had to bring it down a notch because I didn't want to think too highly of myself because I'm sure, I'm sure I know that I've offended people down through the years with my lifestyle choices, with my dress code, so on and so forth. So I had to bring it on back down a notch. And instead of replying in anger, I gave him Jesus. I said, sir, what you are looking for, you will not find sending these kind of pictures out. You looking for the love of Jesus Christ because it will make you whole. It will mend your broken places. It will show you your worth. It will show you that you are a king because your daddy is the king of kings. And I pray that the Lord continues to impart himself into your life through people like me. I pray that you fall on your knees and you ask the Lord for forgiveness of your sins and accept him into your heart because he is the way, the truth, and the life. That is how we have to respond to people, not cussing them out. Don't fight fire with fire. I know he didn't. I know he was probably like, what? He didn't even respond. But it's okay because that's just how people are. We've, we've been so used to responding one way. Whenever you have changed your life and you live a life with the Holy Spirit, you have to know that things inside of you change on a daily basis. I look back at some of my Facebook posts and it, it hurts my heart, actually. It really hurts my heart to know that I was that far away from God that I thought that that was okay to share with the world. All the kind of things that I was sharing on my Facebook page and all different things. Be mindful as Christians. Be mindful. 
You have to have a renewed spirit through Jesus Christ and a pure heart. Let the word of God circumcise you. Get into church. Get into a church where you can fellowship and be held accountable. Get into a church that is preaching Bible. Get into a church where you have heard the pastors doing some awesome things, where you have heard his testimony or her testimony of deliverance. You know that God is working in their life, not just a good feel-good message. A feel-good message ain't going to get us to heaven. Not a feel-good message. I want us to be able to be changed. The word of God, it changes you. I'm trying to tell you what I know, what I've experienced, what I live every day. Sometimes I look back at situations and I'm like, that wasn't nobody but God because Lord have mercy. Not, not, you know, I hear people say, oh, honey, you better thank God I'm saved because if I would have done you, you would have knew me. No, that is still, you still ain't moving in the right, you're not moving in the right, right spirit. Take a deep breath. Respond the way Jesus would want to respond. Let him flow through you in this moment. Father, I stretch my hands to you. I don't want to say nothing rude to your child. Lord, help me. And if you can't say nothing nice, go back to what your mama taught you. Don't say nothing at all. Because the same rule that no weapon formed against you prosper and every tongue that rises up shall be condemned. That same rule applies to you and it applies to me. And it makes me treat people right. Because I don't want to be getting having to get dealt with by the Lord because I, I treated somebody wrong, because I put my mouth on somebody wrong. I had an usher tell me one time, she said, oh, they can put me on the door, honey, because I'm nasty enough to tell them they're not about to come in this sanctuary where we eating no food. That is not of God. That is not, there's a, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And while I'm on that blessed subject, let me say this to all the parents out there that are, that are raising children. First of all, it is a blessing. Your child is a blessing. Somebody somewhere can't have kids. Somebody somewhere lost their child. Somebody somewhere lost their baby in the womb. Know that your child is a blessing. When they get on your nerves and when they sleep and they sweet and they handsome and they're beautiful. When they get in trouble at school and when they bring you home straight A's, they are still a blessing. Trayvon Martin's mother would love to have her son in this moment. Remember that when you are raising your child. Love your child. Discipline them in love. When you discipline a child out of anger and rage and you're cursing and you're yelling at the top of your voice, I want you to understand that the lesson that you're trying to teach is being lost. It's not being received because when you begin to get yelled at and attacked in conversation verbally and even physically, you start to go into fight or flight mode. Your mind is like, do I run? Do I say something back? Do I shut up? You are trying to figure out how to protect yourself. Your child shouldn't need protection from you. They should know that you are disciplining them out of love. Discipline is peaceful. When I tell you my kids would rather have a whooping than for me to give them a speech and a lecture and open up their Bible and tell them what thus says the Lord. Honey, one time my kids was cutting up and I took them to Hebrews and show them how the Lord said, this is, if I do not discipline you, I don't love you. By the time I had a whole Sunday school lesson, they, they I said, so now what y'all think I should do? They was probably about seven and eight and they said, I guess we got to get a whooping. You have to raise your children in fear and admiration and respect of the Lord. And you have to live a life in front of them so that they can see the hand of God. Because I also feel that so many pastors, they say preachers' kids are the worst kids. I feel like it's because they see their past, their preachers and mothers and fathers in the pulpit one way on Sunday. But then they come home and they ain't living that life. So it makes them think that Christ is fake. It makes them think that the power of the Holy Spirit is not real because clearly it can't be because you tell them, telling people to stop uh, doing all these things and you at home mistreating mama, cussing us out, drinking and doing this, that and the third. So on purpose, let's hold ourselves accountable to the word of God. Let's raise our children in the fear and admiration of the Lord. Let's dedicate our marriages back to God. Let's keep him as the sinner. For women that have an issue with submitting to your husband, if you have an issue submitting to your husband, you have an issue submitting to God because he designed marriage. And when he designed marriage, he designed it with his divine plan. Not to say that you are the weaker vessel because it's a bad thing. Honey, I love to be the damsel in distress. 
let your husband run the household. And if he was weak when you married him, you must have liked a weak man. But God is able to transform any situation if you give it to him. If you pray about that thing, if you put it on the altar before him, if you say, Lord, I'm putting, taking my hands off of it. I don't want to be a wife that is controlling my husband. I want to be in correct order because it puts the balance of the household out of order. And the children are not balanced mm -hmm. properly. Mm -hmm. We want our children to learn to, to see that marriage is love. Marriage is compromise. Marriage is give and take. Husbands, love your wife. As Christ loved the church, he brought no harm her way. He brought no foul her way. He was a protector of the church. He is a keeper of the church. Come on in the room. He is a provider for the church. He is a nurturer of the church. Come on in the room. There is nothing that is bad about a husband being over a wife. It's a beautiful thing when it's in the order of God. Wife, let's continue to be a help me, a helper to our husband. Don't nag your husband. Proverbs says a nagging wife is like a drip on a tin roof. Lord, have mercy. Don't nag your husband. Be supportive of him. When he starts to leave his dirty socks on the floor and is wearing your soul out, be grateful that his socks is on the floor because somebody's husband didn't make it home today. Somebody's husband is away at war. Somebody's husband is off on the road and been on the road for three months. Be grateful. Stop arguing about the same small things. Know that life is precious. Tomorrow is not promised. Let's love today like today is our last day. Let's live today for God like today is our last day. Let's give glory unto the, to, unto the Lord that we serve in every area of our life, in our finances. Bring your 10% into the house of the Lord. That's what he said. You can't worry about what they're doing with it. If you feel like the church ain't doing the right thing, you in the wrong church. And why are you comfortable sitting under wrong leadership? Let's do what is right. I love you all on today. I'm going to head back in this sanctuary so that I can get some wonderful more worship in. I love it, honey. I could be at church all day. I could make my bed right there on the altar. Glory to God. I love being in the presence of the Lord. It's my peace. It's my peace. It's my calm. When my kids start getting crazy, uh, for the last while, it's, during the time I was sick, the last three years before I, the Lord changed my life, my peace was marijuana. But now I just press in, honey. I turn on me a worship CD and I just get in the presence of the Lord. I just let his peace rest on me. I just let his peace roll off my back. Thank you, God, because when you are oily, the oil don't let water stick. Come on in the room. Get around some people that are oily because this is what I know. Spirit is thicker than blood. So we might be related in blood, but if we ain't related in spirit, we probably don't have anything in common. Because when I come around, I want to talk about the Lord. I want to talk about holiness. I want to tell you a testimony of what the Lord did in my life today. The Lord does things every day in your life. There's a testimony every single day. When you are living for him, when you are submitted unto him, there's a blessing that he is offering every single day. Share it with somebody. We have to share the love of God with people through our words, through our lifestyles, through our actions. Y'all, I get too excited. I could be done went on and on about the word of the Lord. But I love y'all on today. Share this message if it blessed you and you all continue to do what it is that God has called you to do. In Jesus' name, we are covered under the blood. Go in peace.